D whatever it might be, D eight S eleven seventy nine. That's the that's the name of the of the short tandem repeat. Um, we put all these short tandem repeats information, or, or the, well, all the, the the these short tandem repeat samples. Put them on the this electrophoresis column. Uh, this one will come out over here. Now it might not come here. It might come here or here. Different people will have it come in different places. In this in this uh, sample, it came here. Other places might come out over here. The let's say here uh, we have um, um, it, whatever for this sample for this subject it came out over here. Um, if there were more tandem repeats, it would have uh, come out a little bit faster. Uh, let's say over here. But again, this that 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 doesn't matter. The point is, different people will have this peak come or the two peaks here come either here or here. Um, it's possible that another two people will have the same. It'll come in the same place. That's possible. But we look at this one, it's not very likely that they'll, they'll come to the same place, you know, coincidentally in the first and in the second. It's certainly not the second and the third and the fourth. They're all not going to be the same if they're different people. And one or two might be the same, maybe three, who knows. But for all of them, no. That's how we can identify one single person. And we can say that um, if this, the crime scene DNA profile, so this, let's say this is the crime scene DNA profile, and the one from the, the suspect is the same for all these, all for all these, um, for all these peaks. Then we know that's got to be the person who was at the crime scene. Okay, we're going to ignore that the, the, these numbers there. They're not. They're not really uh, relevant for our discussion. But we can certainly see the different, these uh, different, um, different STRs that are used, and each one has his own, has their own. Each one has their own. Um, as their own place where the peak comes out, and together we have a whole DNA profile of everything. Uh, here, this is the XY, and you know the AMEL, uh, that's for the amylogenin gene. That's found in both X and Y, but if there's a female, there is no Y chromosome. So that's why you only have one signal here. It's only X. There, there, there are two Xs, and they both give off the signal, but they do not, they do not, uh, they do not have the Y. So you can tell, clearly, the person who, um, is the source of the DNA is female. Once in a now, you see there they, they happen in pairs. This is because the person gets DNA from both parents and one is from each of the parents. So sometimes, coincidentally enough here, it's uh, curious, it's about three, happened maybe three times, where the both parents would happen to have the same, would happen to have the same number. So here, um, let's say this is uh, here, both parents had it come out of the same, in the same place. So he got from both parents. You see, uh, there's only one signal. I mean, there might be a little signal over there, but uh, let, let's, you know, let's assume that this is, let's say, oh, this one over here, or maybe this one. Uh, both parents have it at exactly the same place, so there's only one peak. It can happen, uh, but um, you usually see them in pairs. If you see them, let's say there are four of them, let's say for one of these, uh, let's say STRs, probably you have a contaminant. Somebody else's DNA got got mixed up in there. But you should usually see two or maybe one depending on you know, whether the two parents were the same for it. Here's another uh, DNA profile. Uh, you notice that here we use, let's say, only three electrophoresis columns, and we multiplex, let's say, one, two, three, and four on this one, and uh, five on this one. But here we have not three, we have four of them, so we multiplex a little bit less. In any event, um, in any event we have a similar profile again. There are two. Uh, if you only find one, then uh, then the parents were coincidentally the same. Uh, here we have um, here for uh, this one, this gene here, the XY, the amelogenin gene, uh, um, STR. Uh, we have both an X and a Y signal. This shows the subject was male. It's possible that to get or to replicate or to uh, or to use and uh, and analyze. DNA that comes only from the Y chromosome. Now remember, w uh, women do not have a Y chromosome. They have two Xs, but they do not have an X and a Y. So if we get DNA, we isolate DNA that comes only from the Y chromosome, we will not be seeing any women's DNA in there. So this is actually this is actually useful for a couple of reasons. Uh, suppose uh, we have a lot of DNA in, in, in the at the crime scene, and we know a male committed the crime. Uh, let's say it might have been, um, um, uh, let's say, a female sorority house, and um, 
and the crime was committed by a male, or like there are a bunch of witnesses to say it was a male uh, who didn't belong there. So um, with what well, we get a lot of DNA, we can, uh, I mean, we're, we're going to have, let's say, a whole bunch of people, uh, women, let's say it was a female sorority house. Um, well, sororities are female. But anyway, let, uh, we'll see a bunch of women's DNA, but we don't want it to be, to, uh, we don't want to see, we want to see only the one from the perpetrator of the crime. So we take only the Y chromosomes, all the, the women's DNA will not be seen. You won't see it. So you'll, you'll get a very clean DNA sample, which can be used for, uh, for matching. So uh, also, when we only analyze from the Y, remember, um, you get it from the mother and the father. Well, the mother does not contribute the Y. So if you're getting it, a, a, if we're only using uh, the Y chromosome STRs, then uh, then we only have, let's say, one peak in all those, and it'll be a lot, it's, it's a lot cleaner, it's a lot easier to see one peak rather than two, especially if there are some uh, interference. So if we see one, it'll be easier to, um, it'll, it'll be easier to interpret the results. Um, also, the Y chromosome DNA, we might want to look at that because it lasts longer uh, in, um, in vaginal swabs for crimes that involve that. So sometimes we do that. that that's another, uh, that, that's... Um, a, a slight twist on the standard DNA sampling and analyzing. There, now we've used STRs. There are uh, we want them small, uh, short tandem repeats. Now we've actually found smaller than the ones that were than the ones that we've seen. You know, in those uh, like the standard ones that we use, we've seen we found STRs that are even smaller than these. And again, the smaller the better because the smaller they are, the less likely they are going to be damaged. Uh, unless so. We, again, this is like on the horizon. I mean, we have them, we can use them, but they're not standardized yet. However, if we get a DNA sample that's been damaged and a lot of the STRs can't be used, but we can use these mini STRs or ministers, if you want to call them that, uh, these are less likely to be damaged so we can, and they're very often intact, even when the others are damaged, so we can actually use those to identify uh, the, to identify the perpetrator of the crime or the one who was at the crime scene. Um, again, we're starting to be used to use this, but as time goes on, I'm sure, I believe they will be more popular unless they find some kind of trouble with it. But as of now, we don't know of that. Uh, it's it's possible. Now, DNA getting DNA hair happens. Hair is very useful evidence. We know one. Um, we mentioned this before uh, that hair lasts for a long time. Hair is often deposited. The problem is if uh, the hair doesn't, if it doesn't come along with a root, uh, it's, it's not likely to find good DNA from the hair. Uh, but I mean, often the, the, the cells in the, the, in the hair, whatever's left, um, is damaged and you can't use the ordinary STRs. But the mini STRs might actually be able to use even from hair, which uh, you can't, nor usually, and very often you cannot get uh, the regular STRs, you can't get or can't get regular DNA evidence from here. But using the mini STRs, uh, it may be possible to actually use to get DNA evidence from here that we couldn't before. Now we haven't succeeded at this yet, but again, this is something that's being worked on. DNA evidence has formed a revolution. Uh, it, it changes the way forensic studies are done. Now everybody is going to try to get DNA at a crime scene. It's one of the most important things we uh, we can we can get. It's very uh, why because it's I mean it, you can leave it behind every, wherever you go. Um, you touch something, you can leave DNA behind. You uh, spit, you sneeze, cough. DNA is being left behind. It's almost inevitable that a criminal will leave some behind. It's only a question of where whether we can find it. So, but when once we do find it. We, we can we we can identify the person 